Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding CCDF. In this short presentation, we're going to explain how CCDF, or the Complementary Cumulative Distribution Function, is used when making RF power measurements. In many cases, radio frequency power is measured as a simple numeric value, such as minus 45.5 dBm. But some instruments, such as spectrum analyzers and some power sensors, also have the ability to make and display statistical power measurements. These statistical measurements can show us the probability that the measured power takes on a certain value, or how the measured power values are distributed. Generally speaking, there are three primary statistical power measurements, namely the probability density function, or PDF, the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, and the complementary cumulative distribution function, or CCDF. Let's start by looking at the probability density function. The probability density function describes the relative probability that measured power takes on a given value. The information contained in a PDF is similar to the information provided by a histogram, but shows continuous rather than discrete values. Using a PDF, we can find the probability of a measured power falling between two limits by integrating over this interval. If we take our probability density function and integrate over the entire function, the result is the cumulative distribution function, or CDF. Let's pick a point on our CDF curve. At this point, we can say that 95% of the time, the power level is plus 10 dBm or less. CDF curves emphasize minimum power values. In other words, a CDF curve is useful if we want to know what percentage of time the signal's power is below a certain value. Using the cumulative distribution function, we can now compute something called the complementary cumulative distribution function, or CCDF. As the name implies, CCDF is the complement of the CDF curve. This is a fancy way of saying that the CCDF curve values are just one minus the CDF curve values. Let's pick a point on the CCDF curve. Here, a power value of plus 10 dBm corresponds to a probability of only 0.05. This means that our signal power reaches plus 10 dBm or higher only 5% of the time. For this reason, we say that CCDF emphasizes the maximum or peak power values, since it tells us what percentage of time the signal's power is at or above a certain value. And because we're usually more concerned with maximum power values than minimum power values, CCDF is the most common and the most important of the three statistical measurements we've just discussed. Let's take a closer look at the CCDF graph. The y-axis is cumulative probability and is usually plotted on a log scale. The x-axis is power and can be plotted in two different ways. One way is to use absolute power values, say from minus 30 dBm to plus 20 dBm. The second way is to use relative power values, where the origin of the graph is defined as the average power, or 0 dB, and values on the x-axis are dB above average power. Remember that a point on the CCDF graph shows the probability, or the percent of time, that a signal is at or above a certain level. In this relative graph, we see that 10% of the time, the power is 11 dBm or more above the average level. The more the CCDF curve moves to the right, the more frequently our signal takes on values that are significantly above the average value. For example, a signal whose amplitude is more or less constant over time will appear as an almost vertical line on our CCDF graph. But as the signal begins to have greater amplitude variation, the trace moves more and more towards the right. As a CCDF curve moves to the right, the ratio of our peak power to our average power, or the so-called peak to average power ratio, increases. Why is peak to average power ratio important? Over the last couple of decades, the peak-to-average power ratio of common modulation types has been steadily increasing. For example, GSM, or 2G, had a zero peak-to-average power ratio, but each new generation of cellular or wireless technology has had an increase in its peak-to-average ratio. This creates non-trivial challenges for device designers, because signals with high peak-to-average ratios require things like a high dynamic range in analog-to-digital converters or highly linear amplifiers with high peak power capability. CCDF, therefore, is an important measurement 
because it shows us the probability, that is, how often, a signal reaches or exceeds a given peak value. Generally speaking, as the CCDF curve moves towards the right, the signal becomes more stressful or harder for devices to deal with. CCDF can also be helpful to us in a number of other ways. First, it's difficult to mathematically calculate the peak to average power ratio of many modulated signals based solely on that signal's parameters. Even signals with similar modulation may have very different CCDF curves. For example, an LTE signal using 64 qualm modulation will have a different CCDF curve than an LTE signal using only QPSK. So for designing a device like a filter, amplifier, etc., we need to measure the CCDF of the expected real-world input signals as well as the CCDF of the signals used in design, test, and debug. Another way that CCDF can be used is by observing the changes in CCDF as a signal moves through various components. That is, we measure CCDF at both the device input and the device output and make note of any changes. Let's look at an example of this. In this example, our device under test is a simple amplifier. Ideally, an amplifier would increase the amplitude of the signal without distortion. If the signal is amplified without distortion, the CCDF curves will be approximately the same for both the original signal and the amplified signal. On the other hand, if the amplifier output is distorted, the CCDF curves will be different. In this particular case, the reduction in CCDF between the input and the output signal shows that the amplifier has gone into compression. The same methodology can be used with many other active and passive components as well. So in summary, there are three statistical power measurements, the probability density function, or PDF, the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, and the complementary cumulative distribution function, or CCDF. Of these, CCDF is by far the most common and the most important. CCDF graphically represents the percentage of time that a signal reaches or exceeds a certain power level, and thus also provides information on the signal's peak to average power ratio. Modern modulation schemes have increasingly high peak to average ratios, and this places additional stress on both passive and active devices. Therefore, CCDF is an important measurement in designing and testing devices used in modern radio frequency applications. This concludes our presentation, Understanding CCDF. If you'd like to learn more about measuring CCDF using power sensors or spectrum analyzers, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.